and it didn't matter how you felt about the president before this speech. It was beautiful. It was incredible. Many of his critics said he was going to make it about him. He did the opposite of that. And there's no better day than the 4th of July to go through our country's history and say, this is what we fought for. Let's remember who we are as a country. We fight to protect your freedoms. Of all the stupid freakouts that we've had since Donald Trump was elected, this has got to be the stupidest of all time. It was a great speech. It was moving to see all these uh, these fighter jets flying. The B-2 bomber flying over yeah. the nation. Our nation's capital was amazing. <sighs> Wow, welcome back to AM Joy on Earth 2. Donald Trump's big spectacle on the 4th of July. The salute to Donald Trump. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean the salute to America. It was beautiful. It was incredible. That's the reaction Donald Trump wanted for the event that he's dreamed of for the last two years. The only problem is the media this time didn't seem to play along. Fox News, Trump's favorite TV channel, was the only major cable network to cover the event wall to wall, dedicating a two-hour block to Trump's campaign commercial. So... Trump didn't get the coverage that he wanted for his big campaign ad. So cue state media moaning about the lack of attention. It's exposed the anti-American core of the modern left, of leftism. There's a big difference between Democrats and leftists. Democrats shared the love of country and this American experience differed on like marginal tax rates. <laughs> Leftists believe America is an evil bad place. Democrats, they have to do the opposite. Of course. So then that puts them in a position where they're against America, against the flag. You know what? No, the left doesn't love the 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 4th of July. They went ballistic with the yes, the they flags. Do. <laughs> the commentary during the video. I just want to say right now, it's kind of epic. I wish y'all could have seen that and shared in it. Uh, joining me now is author and media analyst Eric Pollard, Timothy O'Brien, executive editor of Bloomberg Opinion, Jennifer Rubin, Washington Post opinion writer, and Michelle Bernard, president of the Bernard Center for Women, Politics, and Public Policy. I'm going to start at the table first for the giggly fellows that were sitting next to me. Um, even, you know, Lou Dobbs was so angry about generals who didn't want to go and stand next to Trump in his commercial that he tweeted that they're snowflake generals, and this is why they haven't won a war since 1991. I don't know what he's yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah. but yeah, this was interesting. This was one time, because normally when we come on and we right, do right, this right, media right. segment, we're talking about how the media just keeps falling back and right, fading right, right. back. This time the media didn't cover it. I mean, uh, they, you know, it's a step forward. It is. I mean, it was a, it was a campaign event. It was a commercial, it was a commercial. as commercial. Yeah. Uh, it was a red state parade, basically. Uh, and the, the speech itself was completely unnewsworthy. The event was essentially unnewsworthy. We have a, a, a bipartisan Fourth of July event in Washington, D.C. Yeah. This megalomaniac, egomaniac event didn't have to be covered. And, and I think it's good the press didn't cover it. Uh, but, it. but we saw the Fox reaction. Part of this entire event was just to create a backlash so right. they could say the liberal media didn't cover. I mean, right. he literally spent tens or $20 million to create this parade so he could, could complain about the press. So, yes, in this instance, uh, I think um, I think the coverage was good. They pulled back. This is kind of a joke. Yeah, well, I, I, had, to, I had to have you on for this segment, Tim, because you're, you're my Trump whisperer today. How, how angry might Trump have been that he, he probably assumed that because he's president, Fourth of July, he does this thing that's a salute to America. It gets covered. The idea that it doesn't get covered the way he wanted. How angry do you think he was? Well, the the, the fact that he began tweeting immediately <laughs> about how heavy the attendance was yeah, right. and uh, how flawless his speech was when it wasn't, as we know, flawless. It had some typically bonkers yeah. misstatements, like the British took over U.S. airports yeah. during the Revolutionary War. You don't remember War. when George Washington flew the missions <laughs> that wasn't over in my, the airport? That wasn't in my <laughs> class. And you know, the other thing, you know, the setting for this at the Lincoln Memorial, Trump has tried since the beginning of his presidency to associate himself with Abraham Lincoln. Right. And, and Lincoln, of course, stands as this colossus across American presidential history. It would be more, you know, synchronous for Trump to say, I'm like the great Andrew Johnson or the great Warren Harding or the great Richard Nixon. He's not like the great Abraham Lincoln. But yeah. this is the extent to which he lacks a sense of, his, of humility and of the reality about who he really is. And he's essentially, as this event showed, he's a showman. Yeah, and you know, Jennifer, he even got mocked by the Russians. I mean, even the <laughs> Russians, they, 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 they mocked him. They said that it was, it was you know, low energy. <laughs> like, they used his own insults to right. insult his speech. How, do, how does his staff keep that away from him so he doesn't find out? It's hard when the home office gets upset with you, you know, out in the provinces. It really is. Demoralizing. Demoralizing. I will say this. I thought it was very interesting because it 
actually reinforces this huge gender divide that Donald Trump has created. For Donald Trump, America is about wars, it's about winning, it's about crushing the opposition. There is no sense of goodness, of grace, of um, willingness to take in the huddled masses, of course. And this is, I think, becoming a huge gender divide. Women do not like this talk of war. They do not like militarization over the 4th of July. Certainly some men don't as well. But as a general, this is exactly why women hate him. It's all about him. It's all about war. It's all about him puffing himself up. It's all about